Hi everyone, good afternoon. How are you all doing on this lovely, lovely Thursday? Lovely Thursday. I hope you all have been doing well from our last episode last week where we were just chilling. Yeah, we were just freestyling last week. I brought on my friend and colleague in media, woman in media, Adadeya Fashionu, who um, is the founder of the TAN TV uh, media company based in Washington, DC. So last week we actually had fun doing that. It was, as I said, it was impromptu. We were just relaxing. So for me, it was very enlightening. And also I think we said it right. It was, we needed it to boost our momentum to create that, that energy within ourselves as we prepare for the event we are hosting at uh, the end of October. Which is, in, which is in alignment with the United Nations Global Goals Week. The 75th General Assembly, UN General Assembly just concluded at the end of uh, September. However, the Global Goals Weeks were extended up until uh, throughout actually the month of October. So as official partners of the Global Goals Week, TAN TV, which I'm a part of um, with um, Adadeya Fashionu, we will be hosting various digital events in partnership with the, the UN Foundation and Global Goals Week. So thank you all so much for tuning in last week. Today will be a very, very, very enlightening uh, gaff. I see here, I see here, Akiba is here. I, hi, Akiba. Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan, what's up? <laughs> uh, Bismarck Agency is here. Uh, Toya from Ghana, she's also in. So thank you all so much for being here. And before, you know, before we even go any farther, let me just dive right into today's gas. We have someone that I've known for quite a few years. <laughs> he, I told him just now, you know, you need to introduce yourself. So he said, really? He gonna say like he from down the street. I say yes. You just you just do your do do you you know. So without further ado, let's introduce Mr. Claret Connor, and he will be able to tell us even more about himself and his uh, work at the National Program Bureau. Mr. Connor. Good afternoon, Kioma. How are you doing? Good afternoon to your viewers and those that are are joining now and those that will join in later. I would assume. Um, yes, Clara Connor, I am uh, from Down Street, as I told you, as we, as we were discussing earlier. Um, and um, actually, you know, I mean, I think you, know, you knew me from, from my previous uh, uh, assignments, um, going back to the Chamber of Commerce and probably even before then. Um, but I think now, before then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I am the director of the National Recovery Program Bureau. Um, the National Recovery Program Bureau is established uh, with, a, with, a, with an assignment, with a task. We'll get into a little bit of that. But um, as as you as you rightfully um, said, you know, a son of the soil, um, born and raised on Saint Martin, live in Down Street, went to school in Down Street, went to the beach in Down Street, <laughs> did everything Down Street. Um, got on a few fights in Down Street. <laughs> I can imagine. They ball Down Street. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a Martin is home. And, um, you know, so I'm happy to have this opportunity to, um, to, serve, to serve our beautiful island in this capacity. And I look oh. forward to the conversation to the gaff. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Connor. Um, as I said, every, as I say every episode, you know, the platform gaffing was created with the intent to just be relaxed, to be chill. The, the idea actually is to be able to create content, social impact content that will allow persons to be informed, inspire, you know, and to be able to feel some level of, of charge within themselves and create a sense of, of awareness as to what is happening around themselves, around them and their family within the community, as well as digging deep also. So we're able to reach persons where they are basically. So it matters not where, what your social status is, but the level of conversation we have, as I always say, it's not to, 
it's not to insult the intellect of all people, but we want to be able to converse with, in a term where we're able to reach everyone, everyone who is following us, they're able to communicate and understand us. And what we also have, Mr. Connor, we have engagement for our viewers. And that's one of the things I really, really appreciate with, with Gaffing. There are persons, there are people who are viewing, they're engaging, they're commenting live, and we're able to, if they ask questions, if they right. make a statement, we're able to react. So we, there's an engagement and interaction. So well, I'm very, well, very happy. Well, what I would like to say based on, on, on that, you know, that nice explanation as to the objective of, of a program such as this, is that it, it indeed is important for persons to, to be able to not only interact, but also to be informed and it being formed on, on certain and different levels because oftentimes when uh, when when a topic is being discussed it always comes from you know usually comes from the, the position of the expert telling you um, or a sharing but this I think it's important when you have a, when you have dialogue when you have conversation about things you go a little deeper than that you go you mm -hmm. go to the levels of how it affects you how how yes. how it impacts you you know and, and and what that impact means not only to yourself but also to your community because you can't impact the community if you are not impacted yourself and then when you're impacted then you you take ownership and you feel responsible so i think it's a very good platform to have discussions like this on Thank you so much, Mr. Connor. So here we have Elisa, Elisa Lake. She said, one of my favorite humans, Mr. Connor. So shout out to Elisa. What's up, Elisa? Nicole the Weaver is here as well. She said, good afternoon, Kioma, Mr. Claret. So nice to see and hear you. And here, you see, Mr. Connor, why I need my glasses? This is why I need my glasses. <laughs> so mm -hmm. nice to see and hear you, hear you here on this platform, sharing your knowledge and expertise very very um essential um nicole thank you so much akiba is still here so mr connor just let's just dive right in and no time is limited on your end and trust you me we get carried away on this platform we definitely get carried away what exactly is the national recovery program bureau for persons who do not who aren't aware let us know please what exactly this 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 bureau represents okay the bureau is established as a legal entity on St. Martin. It was established after Hurricane Irma. Um, and the objective of the Bureau is to, is to implement uh, recovery projects for St. Martin. As you know, after the hurricane in 2017, um, the Dutch government and the Dutch citizens, basically because this is ta Dutch taxpayers' money, um, committed 550 million euros to St. Martin um, for, its, for its recovery efforts. Um, just to give people a little background as to how that number came about, um, the, country, the country was devastated, obviously. Um, all of us went through some very tough times back then. And the objective of this money was to help the country recover, you know, to build back and, um, and, and, and implement certain um, resiliency in the country to, to handle future um, disasters because you know sometimes people are, people say and I, I never say this and I want your audience to, to hear this clearly that I don't want to experience no hurricane again I would never say that you know why because hurricanes are part of living here on cement and hurricanes are part of our lives so we have to we have to constantly position ourselves to be better prepared for the next storm that comes. And this, this, this trust fund um, is designed to help us, to help the government of St. Martin implement projects that would then bring that, you know, to help support that, um, that, that, that objective. The National Recovery Program Bureau came out of, it's established as I indicated um, by law, and it is a, it's a, it's a it's, call it in, in, in Dutch standard, so it's a, it's a independent government bureau. So we, so we, 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 are, we exist by law. Um, and because we exist by law, we report to the government. We do things on behalf of government. So we, we are not here as an independent bureau deciding on what projects, deciding on, on, on when to implement projects, deciding on what to fund um, from, with regards to the trust fund, but we are here solely to implement the projects. Um, in setting up the National Recovery Program Bureau, 
Uh, prior to setting up the National Reco uh, Program Bureau, the country had an interim recovery committee that was as a, a departments and, and, and uh, civil servants that manned that, that unit within government. And they started off with, with some of the emergency projects that kicked off in 2018, right after, right after the hurricane. The NRPB, as we would call it, which is the National Recovery Program Bureau, was the law was passed in August of 2018. And, and then the law stated that it has to have a director. And then when a director is appointed, then the bureau can exist. So I was appointed in January of 2019. And you know, by that, and, and that way the bureau came to be. And then everything that the IRC did was transferred into the NRPB. Some of the civil servants that worked for the IRC um, was also transferred, you know, through regular document, you know, through regular processes um, to the NRPB. And, and now we exist to as a PIU, which is the project implementation unit working on behalf of the government with the World Bank in implementing the projects that are funded by the trust fund. In a nutshell. Go ahead. I said that, that's, that's a nutshell right there. Okay, very good. I remember when the, the interim group was, was, um, was formed and I also know when the, trans, when the transition into the actual bureau. But what I, what I think is, is very commendable is the fact that the government does not have to be responsible for all of the implementation of the projects that they actually you know, allocated or created rather an a, a institution a body that can handle that while they manage it, monitor it from far. So right. I really think. But but just just to just to, to 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 bring some clarity to what you stated, we are not we are doing this in tandem with government. Huh? We are doing this in collaboration with the and different departments because we are doing it for government. So in in other words, the, the the decisions that are made based on the budgets that were set, obviously there are parameters to everything. But the, the decisions that are made within those parameters are, are usually made um, based on government's requests or based on government needs. But the standards that we are that we are working under, in terms of safeguards, in terms of compliances, in terms of administrative and financial um, um, standards, and you call those you know the fiduciary standards are based on the the World Bank standards. And that is what is important because that those those standards are a little more advanced, a little more, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, con condensed to, mm -hmm. to standards beyond what the country is used to, and and that that took us some getting, you know, some getting used to. Getting and used I to. must say that that you know we get so much support from the civil service from different departments within government. It, it gives you, it, give, it, it helps you um, in executing your task because what we are doing basically will then be transferred into government. So everything that we are doing ends up as either an asset or as, 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 a, as a policy or that it would enhance a, 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 a procedure or you know, a, a department or ministry within government. So it, we are doing it on behalf of the country, for the country. Very good. I really love it. I have noticed, this is off record, I've noticed a lot of uh, persons, civil servants actually were shifted there into the Bureau who are employed there now. So I, I think that is very good. I think what I, what I love also is the fact that, you know, we're able to recognize who we have and what the contributions can be rather than going elsewhere and looking for new persons to work. We're able to allocate that um, human force within yeah. our existing pool. That, that's an right. that, that, that's a very important element because oftentimes we talk about the fact and and has been mentioned you know really um, throughout the course of the existence of NRPB of the capacity of the country. Um, but remember, uh, 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 the size of Saint Martin, we don't have twenty project managers working for government. You know, we don't have we don't have an abundance of, of environmental safeguard specialists. We don't have an abundance of social safeguard specialists. So so but we have what we need to, to, to run the country. But when you have to now bring in on top of the regular administration 
processes, daily operational processes, and you have to work on projects, you can't take the little few that you have at government and, mm -hmm. and allow them to, uh, expect them to continue with their daily tasks while yeah. taking on such a challenge um, in dealing with the World Bank because the World Bank really, it's, a, it's an experience on itself. Um, so the capacity that we have is for St. Martin. When you bring now a, a layer, a level like 500, a billion dealers really to implement, you will need external support in order for you to bridge that gap. But one of the things that we that we have, and we should always remember and take advantage of, is the is the, the information that that persons, even when we bring in experts from outside, they come and work for NRPB, who is working for government, which is work mm -hmm. for the country. So everything that they develop remains here, right? So again, sure. um, you know, whatever expertise that we need, sometimes to come in, you know, uh, depending on the, on the project, is always an, an element that is a that's that's project specific, but that means that that individual or that those expertise are providing something that is tangible and that that tangible item remains on St. Martin for us to have forever you know so so it's and, and it's it goes hand in hand with those who we are working with on a daily basis because they work in in collaboration with these experts to ministry department heads ministry focal points um different civil servants at different levels and and that 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 information is then um, either shared, you know, disclosed, provided, and they can take that on, and, and the country can own that moving forward. So it, it is an opportunity, you know, on, on all sides, in terms of supporting the capacity that we have, and also enhancing the capacity uh, for future. Very good. I, I just love it. I really and truly love it because I am able to see, you know, the transformation. Everything takes time. And when you're out, most times when you're outside looking in, you tend to ask them, what are they really doing? But if you actually pay attention and you, you get like a microscopic view in, in within, you're able to observe things are actually moving. But in reality, things really do take time. To speak to our viewers, I know we have a viewership of local viewership in St. Martin. We have a viewership throughout the region as well. I see some of my friends from um, Nigeria here, from Zimbabwe in, in the live as well. So I want to just say as always, thank you so much for being here every week, every Thursday at 3 p.m. Thank you so much. There are persons who are back out at work and they look at the play after so we definitely want to commend you and thank you for that um for persons who are not in st martin just in case you feel to yourself oh you know what this have nothing to do with me it has everything to do with you the reason why i'm saying that is st martin is not isolated by itself we are in in the archipelago of the caribbean and what happens here is also reflected in every other caribbean island and henceforth what happened in other islands we also feel it here all right so it's always good to have an understanding as to what really is happening with our neighbors, because you just never know. It creates a deeper insight. It allows you to open your minds and to be able to pay attention. And for things that you may never have known or heard of before, you're able to be informed here, all right? So don't think, oh, because this is this gaffe is based primarily on projects or, or conversation on St. Martin, that it's irrelevant to you. Nothing is irrelevant, all right? I have a friend and he told me in 2011, he said, how do you know what you like if you don't try it all? So that goes to say, how do you know what is beneficial to you if you do not engage, you show up and you participate? Mr. Connor, would you agree with me? Totally, I, I think that, that um, uh, if, if, knowledge, if knowledge is not shared, it's nothing. It can't be knowledge. The only, the only exactly. way you would have any kind of expansion or any kind of enhancement is when you when you add more to it and and if when you share exactly. actually it mm -hmm. gives that 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 ability to gain more because now you 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 are you are you are building you are spreading you know you and and I think exactly. it's important to to share knowledge I, I I I am here because I'm a byproduct of my community you know when I think about my upbringing and 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 having to 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 uh, to you know to 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 grow up amongst you know persons in the community like a Don Hughes and a Vance James, you know these are men that 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 spoke 
into your life and these are people that you you model your your career yeah. after and and you 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 know you you are you are able now to to live at a certain standard that that was that that comes from an investment what should i do with that if i can't pass that on to the next generation so everything that i do exactly. you know i always try to i mean you and i sat when i was by the chamber for hours outside yes you know, sharing information you remember <laughs> do, because that is what i love to do you know when you meet yeah. you know, people who have an ambition who have a, who have a desire you know who wants to do things you you give them that opportunity to, to go and explore and then what you do with what you have now is pass it on to the generations that come after exactly. you listen, we are going to expire huh? and, and and when you get older like the as as, as michael ferrier said the, the paper spins a little faster and it, it doesn't go <laughs> so time time and and, and um, uh, speed up and then you realize that that you have to you have to leave it behind otherwise you know what's what's the sense of having knowledge Exactly. But so just definitely. That's uh, huh? the point. Going back to the discussion on the on the um, on trust fund, um, the 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 amount of money that has been that that we are working on right now, because obviously we talk about five hundred and fifty million, right? But yes. all of that isn't been all of that has not been committed um, as yet, and the the amounts that we because we have projects under um, implementation, which are projects that we're working on. And then we have projects mm -hmm. that are preparing because with the World Bank, it takes uh, almost a year plus, you know, a year and a half to prepare mm -hmm. properly for projects because everything has to be in place. Um, and we have about 250 million right now that we're working on in terms of projects. And we will be working on another 174, 175 million in preparing. And, um, you know, the range, from, the range from everything from infrastructural projects to home repair, to items that you purchase for, for different departments um, um, and, and services that a country may need. So, you know, it's a, a, a wide range of different activities that we are engaged with as a National Recovery Bureau. And I do, I must say that I, I do have a very committed staff, local and foreign. And I'm so proud of them because they, they every day they come to work and give 110% to yeah. I, I see that. I, I, I honestly, I see it. I see it from outside. I see everything appears very organized, very aligned. So I do see that. Miss, Mr. Do, Mr. Uh, Connor, let me just highlight. So Sharika Higgs is here. She said, Clara, she okay. highlights you. Uh, um, Nicole Deweaver. Sharika, no, I thank you for your for your compliment. I see. I read it. Uh, Nicole Deweaver says, definitely grateful to Mr. Claret. He has been such a, a selfless person. Thank you for always extending yourself. Thank you for always extending yourself to St. Martin, young people, heartfelt appreciation. Glenda Luge is here. Good afternoon, Glenda, what's up? So let's just go right back into our gap. So we already, we already divulged on what's the importance of the trust fund for our country. So the, prog the, pro the progress of projects that are currently currently under implementation what projects are currently being implemented um from the national uh, recovery program bureau what are you all working let's, on right let's now let's use the acronym just nrpb okay I, I i say it out loud because just in case no persons don't know okay let me let me do this or guess if you not if when you hear me say nrpb it base i basically mean the acronym stands for national recovery program bureau okay so we will just shorten the language and just use the acronym, all right? So NRPB. Right, so the projects that we have, we have seven projects, as I indicated, that are under uh, implementation. One is the Emergency Recovery Project 1, um, and that has an envelope of $55.2 million. And that, that project has different, you know, different components. Um, and different activities that is that is part of it. And one of the activities or, or, or some of the activities um, deal, dealt with, you know, emergency um, and, and disaster relief uh, uh, elements. So the fire, um, ambulance, you know, so we, 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 we would buy um, certainly emergency items uh, for them. Um, it, it also, it also did, it's designed to assist 
in restoring the resilience of our utility services. So I, I think it was in the media last week, we, 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 um, we, we, we paid, or we did a retroactive payment to GEBE for the works that they did right after the hurricane, I think to a tune of about $1.4 million. Um, and, 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 you know, that came out of this, this particular project. Hmm. It, it deals with housing, deals with, 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 um, with social housing. We, we, we did, you know, over 109 units over at um, the St. Martin Housing Development Foundation. We are, we, are, we are right now engaged with private home repair. Um, government set us a, okay. standard, a standard after the hurricane of, as to which type of person would be, would be able to be considered for assistance with regard to replacing their roofs. Mm -hmm. And um, and so we have, we will at the end have about 200, 209 homes that we would have helped, um, private homes, mind you. And, and Kiyoma, to be very honest, right? Um, mm -hmm. This is a gift to the country. This is a gift to the people. So if, if say for instance, you know how back in the day, persons would build homes on jollification. So the whole neighborhood, I mean, yes. in my time, you know, I had two friends where we would end up on a, on a weekend. I don't know nothing about mixing cement, I, but I would be there, you know, carrying mm -hmm. buckets and, of cement and, yes. and wheelbarrows of sand. And we help our friends build. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. your friend have a house that probably worth, you know, half a million gillers, but it costs mm -hmm. him, a hundred thousand gillers to build because we all helped, right? It so it was a community effort. It was a community, and it continues that. That's how yeah. the country developed. So imagine, imagine persons who have built homes in the forties, and the fifties, and the sixties um, that have been through multiple hurricanes, and now this mega mm -hmm. storm came and damaged their house. This person probably is now in retirement age, um, don't have the money to build back um, a, a house, and government is saying we need to build back better that person, you know, having met the criteria that was set by government, um, qualifies for assistance and in, in, in through the trust fund, we're helping these families to the tune of about 60 to $70,000 a house in terms of the repairs that we have to put because we're not just putting back on a roof, you know, two by fours or three by six with some, T111 felt paper and zinc. No, we are, we're actually structuring the, in the, 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 the uh, improving the structure of the home because that after the hurricane, the Ministry of, of, um, of Public Works in Bromi, um, they, they, they implemented a, an enhanced um, process of how roofs should go on because obviously now you learn and this is- I the remember that. Mm -hmm. Doing it better than we did before mm -hmm. and so we are, we, are, we are implementing these homes that were not designed um, with these standards. Now we're implementing these standards on the home. That means that you literally, some in some instances, have to go and rip the entire roof off and build mm -hmm. it back up. Yeah. Um, to the point where you can implement it to, to the standards. And, and we are doing that. Um, and, and, and again, that is, that, is, that is a gift to the people of this country from the trust fund. And, and you know, that can, that can be understated because it's, it's real money, it's real work, it's real enhancement, you know? So hopefully for the next hurricanes that are coming, that's why I said earlier that I would never say, I don't want to see a hurricane again, because all we have to do now in, 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 in this time is to prepare the country to withstand yeah. these mega storms as they come and, 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 and deal with them when they come, you know? Because the only person that isn't going to see another hurricane is a guy who's, on, who's six feet under. And I want to exactly. stick around for a while. So I'm going to be here for every hurricane that comes. Um, so the, the social homes are as, as well, we, we did repairs to the police station building, the administration building of the police station, both of them, the one in okay, very nice. the one in Phillipsburg. That was another challenge because again, the roof in Phillipsburg, we had to first make it airtight and watertight. So we went and we changed all of the windows initially, and then we had to go and fix, fix the roof. We thought that the roof repairs would have been minimal because it's a concrete roof, but that it turned out we had to refurbish the entire roof. And that, that went way over budget in terms of the, the, the allocations. And, um, but again, now we have a police station um, that is secure, airtight and watertight. Um, and, then, 
and and also we we uh you know in Saint Martin we don't necessarily have hurricane shelters. We have facilities that is used yes. for shelters, and yes. this is this is and we invest in 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 you know in in these facilities so the community centers, the different school gyms, the all the public areas like like John Lamney Center. Yeah. Those these facilities are getting upgraded, really getting upgraded. Um, to the, to the point where, let's say, for instance, and I think it was the last last month, we we hand over four of these facilities back to government. Okay. Um, NIPA, the Milton Peters College Gym, Dutch Quarter Community Center, okay. and the Rupert Maynard Community Center. But what we've done at these, at, at in particular, the centers and the communities where people use regularly, we install air conditions. Um, so when oh, they nice. come back and they call want to have a class uh, up at, uh, <laughs> up at uh, down in Dutch Quarter, where her family is from, or down out in St. Peter's, you know, now she has a facility that is, that has that have air core, um, that have running water, that that fully have equipped, yeah, fully equipped for the community because these things yeah. are not placed there just for hurricane. We made sure yeah. that that the, the you know the shutters and everything that we place on these buildings. Uh, uh, so that in the event a hurricane hits, they can be used for a shelter. But in essence, what we have done is we've, we've, we've created a better environment for, for the communities to use. Um, there's water right now there. We have you know a, a system where it, 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 uh, it has a, a filter so it can be on drinking water. It has a, a reservoir for, for water, for backup water in case it's used during a, a disaster or storm. Um, but again, the community is enjoying this now, you know? Very good. So. You mentioned, Mr. Mr. Connor, you mentioned you support the, the Bureau has, uh, the Bureau has been supporting, uh, private homes in terms of rebuild, of uh, rebuilding roofs and also social housing. I, I'm, I, this is me off asking this question off script mm -hmm. because based on the economy right now, the impacts of COVID. So many persons are unemployed. So many persons are not able to pay their not to pay their rent, not even social housing rent. Um, is there? This is just me asking. Is there any way that persons who live in social homes can be com compensated? Because I see more and more persons are being served letters and, and being thrown out. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know the thing about it is this: um, when the hurricane hit, no one thought about COVID. Yeah. No one thought that a pandemic would hit us, you know, two, two or three years later. So the, the fact that we are dealing with this right now, that the whole aspect of the trust fund was set up to build resiliency in the country that would would stand disasters. Unfortunately, we were not thinking of COVID, um, but what the- Good, Dutch, because they didn't know. Exactly. But what was said by the state secretary after when COVID hit, because obviously when people hear, well, you got $100 million set, um, put on, why don't we use this for these type of emergencies? But it was clear from the government of the of the Netherlands that mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't want to confuse or, or, or mix the recovery efforts of hurricanes, because whether we have a COVID situation, pandemic, um, whatever whatever emmy coming later on we will have hurricanes yeah right? definitely so so we need to we need to be disciplined and focus on saying let's not take our eyes off of that because this is something that very well will happen you know it happens annually mm -hmm. but Dutch created a, a facility of of liquidity support not only to St Martin but the the, the Caribbean part of the kingdom and the state secretary mm -hmm. was very explicit in saying listen we are not going to um, to use the trust fund as a response to COVID in all instances. What I can say though, because the hospital, which is a very important um, service to the country, well, you know, one of the infrastructures that, that, we, that we live from, that, yeah. has, that is a project that had funding to enhance it and make it better for disasters and in, 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 in the COVID situation in the medical field really is a challenge. That has the hospital got $3 million 
to respond to COVID in terms of its facility and setup. So, so you, despite the fact that that it was, you don't want to mix the COVID situation with the with the hurricane situation. Okay. We were already enhancing the resilience of the hospital mm. from the trust fund, so they got a little extra now to deal with this specific. Okay. When we take it now to the airport, the airport too was being is being um, affected by COVID, right? And because of, of operations. And what the airport did is the airport, in, in the project for the airport, we have a facility that would ensure that the airport operational expenses is maintained if there was another disaster that would hit where the airport would shut down. COVID mm -hmm. happened, the airport had to shut down because obviously travel was restricted, it still is. And the airport, the airport was able to tap into that, to that facility that was created to help them now bridge that gap until um, travel comes back. But in terms of the general um, country, that, that, that arrangement is going through a different process than the trust fund. Mm. Very good. Very good. Um, I, my heart just go out to people, you know, who, I mean, this is not for you to respond. I'm just making a statement. Mm -hmm. My heart just go out to people who are hardworking people, you know, were always employed and because of the impact of COVID. And I do know everyone across the world, across the globe is feeling this impact as well. But it's very heart wrenching to see people being thrown out of their homes, you know, and like, where would they live because of the of what's happening? It's very heart wrenching. No right. people aren't right. working. There's no jobs. It's it's hard. So, I mean, it's 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 something that like you, like you said, it's it's worldwide, you know, and it's it's real. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you look at America, they print their own money. And they're having problems um, dealing with those challenges, and you know, at every level of society. Um, and yeah. and that's why it's 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 a, it's going to take us some time to get out of this, but I, I can guarantee that we will. I think we just need to. I mean, government is doing all that it can in terms of, 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 of its own liquidity support to companies, um, the SSRP um, to that 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 they have implemented. But that money needs to come from somewhere as well. Um, and again, you know, it it is it goes to show. And one of the things that people have to really realize is that there is a reason that we have a system where we have to give a contribution when things are good. Why? Mm. You always have to think about that day when things will not be good. And when you can, when you can rely now on government, whether they get the money through liquidity support from the, from, from the Netherlands or whomever, the issue, the fact remains that when we are out of this and every business person or every entrepreneur, every um, Every, every citizen needs to understand that their contribution now needs to go back to keep the country running, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If you ask me, we have, a pro we have one of the projects that, that we are, uh, that we, are, that we, are we, just, we just kick off last month, um, is an enterprise support project. Now, uh, persons were very upset because it took so long to, 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 you know, to finalize. But it came in the right. I'm excited time. about that one. Came at the right time because what that what yeah. our program provides is funding to mm -hmm. to to the tune of one hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars, up to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, for startups mm -hmm. and and, yeah. and, um, and other entrepreneurs, S, uh, MSMEs, right? Micro, small, yeah. medium enterprises, access. Mm -hmm. But of course, you have to be that. MSME that can prove that you have been loyal and committed to not only your, 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 what you are doing as a business, but also your obligation as a business. And that is why oftentimes when these programs kick up, they tell you, you need to be registered properly at the chamber. You need to have your taxes up to date. You know, you need to have your administration, your, 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 your administration documents, um, you know, in, uh, up to date that you can then fill out forms and, and provide this information and it can be verified. Why? Because then a person like you who have been, you know, who have been diligent in your operations um, now should not 
fall through the cracks of, of yeah. uh, all because of a pandemic. And it, it's yeah. part, we, we just we just um, finalized um, two of, uh, of the, the first set of applicants with credits. We also have um, the- uh, we Very also, nice. We also have uh, uh, Winwood Island Bank as one of the financial institutions that are, that are providing this service to, to, the, to, to the country as well. And we hopefully, you know, we will see a lot of our entrepreneurs like yourself benefiting from these um, from these funds. Yeah, grant I loans a small loan, and as a grant, mm -hmm. up to, if you have a loan of of, of up to twenty thousand dollars, can be refinanced through this through this program. What you can also do is asset replacement. If you your assets were were damaged from the hurricane, you get oh, wow. you, you get sixty five percent. Um, of, of the total package go into mm -hmm. asset replacement and that part is a grant. That's mm -hmm. not a loan. You understand? So that is like going yeah. and fixing somebody else, shaking their hands, giving them the keys and telling them, continue with your life. This is like, you know, oh, no, you, you had a studio, it's mashed up here. Here's your nice couch, yeah. right here are your lights. Here is a nice painting. You know, you have everything back. Continue with your program. You know, this, this I, is, I, these are things that- I, I love did. this. We should take I, I definitely one of the things that we look at is disbursement rates, right? How much how much money we are spending? That is that is one of the tools that we measure the success of the trust fund by. So if but of course everything comes with a criteria, right? You have to of make sure things are things are done properly. But if 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 we are if we are dispersing two, three, five million dollars a month, that goes right into our economy. Huh? Exactly. Them, you know, so. Exactly. I, I, again, I really believe more conversations like this needs to take place so our citizens, our more people can know. Yeah. Excuse me? More conversations among. That's because. More gaps. You are, that's because <laughs> more <so> gaps. <laughs> more gaps. We definitely need to have more gaps. We need to be gaffing more, you know, about, about what exactly, what resource is available to our people. Because a lot of times, not the reality is this: not everyone reads newspaper, not everyone listens to the radio. There are persons who are always on Facebook or Instagram. So we need to be able to be like a warrior when they go out to um to a war. They're able to cover all their grounds, right? Mm -hmm. So in in August we had Edsel Edsel gum some credits. Right, August, exactly. So yeah, we spoke heavily for like two hours on not just not just on on this opportunity, the loan slash grant opportunity, but really stimulating a really stimulating gaff on business and the sim in the simplest form, you know. So we definitely need to have more conversations about this. And I will tell our viewers all the time, we we don't have to. We take it upon ourselves based on our platforms and based on our natural instincts to be able to share this knowledge, share this information, to let you know what is available. Now it's your responsibility thereafter do something with to it. move forward with it. You determine what, what, what you do. And as what Edsel stated in, in our gaff with him in August, do not just leave everything up to the other person. Don't right. leave it up to your accountant to figure it out. Get involved, know what is right. happening, right? Get involved because this here, the loan slash grant opportunity is amazing. I mean, 65% of it is a grant and 35% of it is a loan. You will not get that anywhere else. I've never heard about it. So for persons who do not know, a grant is what you don't pay back. A grant is a gift. A grant it's is a, a gift. gift amount. It's a gift. So 65% of whatever it is, you applied for whatever it is you're granted 65 percent is a gift and you only repay 35 percent what more can we want than that what more you understand what i'm saying so we definitely need to realize what is happening and take full advantage of it so we have esmina here mr mr connor <laughs> Yo, esmina is here from chamber one of our girls esmina yeah. said Good afternoon. Love this. Well done as always, Mr. Connor. A man after God's own heart. Kiyoma, beautiful program as always. Very informative. Esmina, my darling, I love you to pieces. Thank you so much, honey. Hi, Esmina. Uh, uh, Mr. I think, I'm sure you heard Mr. Cla uh, Mr. Connor, right? Why? I'm getting tongue twisted between Claret and Mr. Connor. 
<laughs> um, Patricia, Pla Patricia Pantiflet says, uh, Claret, Connor, remain the person you are. Can't keep a great man down. You are blessed and highly favored. Most definitely. That's Patricia Pantiflet. Those, those are powerful women there. Huh? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Good to see. Good to definitely. see that they're tuning in, uh, and that, that you know we have this uh, this 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 platform that we could communicate. And I wanted to, to to touch a little bit about what you said when you when you talk about the fact that persons don't read the newspaper, and um, we know that we know that, and that is why as NRPB, you know we we have a very active Facebook page, mm -hmm. and we also have I a website. And and I must thank my communication team that's headed by Giselle York. Who um who you know she she gets the she gets the 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 the, the all the criticism inside, so that that product that you see externally comes out sparkling because she takes it very serious and she has a, a worthy um assistant by the name of uh, of uh, Sabine Smith another local Saint Martin born young person that came back home to um, to give her contribution and they are the ones that are doing this you know they 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 tell me what to do where to do it. Went to do it. Notice. Just follow. <laughs> just follow. Remember when you called me? What I told you, right? Remember when you called? Yeah. Me and asked if I could be on a program. But the first thing I told you is what? Check check with Giselle. Giselle Giselle, Giselle, Giselle knows. Giselle will tell you what that. to do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If you give persons have responsibility, you let them do that. You know that's that's exactly. How you Sorry, Bella. Exactly. Um, your I've been on your website many times. That's how I follow up on on the on your Facebook page as well. It's very engaging, very appealing. The content, I must say, the presentation of the content is very appealing, very engaging, and it makes you want to actually read it. That's yeah. what I love. It makes you actually want to read it. It's soft on the eye. So I will extend, I will extend and say uh, kudos to Giselle and Sabine and for your entire team as well. I'm, I'm confident you all are doing a very, very good job. So yeah. commendable there. So Mr. Connor, just to dive in. Oh, let me just read it. Just let me just mention this. For persons, viewers, I say this every week, I tend to get carried away. Go on gaffing.com. That's G Y H A F F I N. Gaffing.com. Subscribe to our newsletter. You all know it's a new platform started in the height of COVID. We are building this community. We are building this media platform beyond just sitting here, right? We are working with partners. The intent is to work with partners and to be able to create multicultural social impact content. The content that will allow you to be inspired and to be charged to move forward, to move your knowledge from point A to point B, to discuss things that are disruptive in our community, things that we don't talk about. So this is what these platforms are for, all right? So uh, Roxanne Stanford say, Stanford say, hi, Claret Connor, you haven't changed, always humble. Mm -hmm. Nope, he has not changed one bit. So persons, again, check out credits, check out Winwood Island Bank to learn more about the loan slash grant opportunity. You cannot go wrong there. This is a very good opportunity. So where are we now? We have spoken about so much. Is NRPB satisfied with the pace of some of the activities being implemented? Have we, have we life, covered that? Life, and I think you mentioned it earlier in life that you, you have to do so much in order to, to, to experience everything. Um, I, I, yes. I, think, I think that there's, a, I, you know, the word satisfied, yeah, it has to be taken in context, right? Um, because the fact, that, the fact that we are doing something that the country can benefit from, you know, in a, in, a, in a residual way, you know, with moving forward, yeah. um, it, it should take the time that it takes. Why? Um, you know, when you, you, you Caribbean people will say when you jock up, you know, when you grow up too fast, yeah. or you, you get to an adult, you get to your adult life and you don't know how to yeah. act like an adult because yes. you're not developed properly. I think we are, mm -hmm. we are, we, what of we course, are, right. For exactly, that's a good term. That's one of the terms that, that right. we had in here. Force right, and they get rotten fast, right? Yeah. Um, but it it to to me, it is about why it is taking the time. I, I mentioned earlier about the different type of standards that the World Bank operates yeah. from, um, mm -hmm. the different types of safeguards that the, the World Bank has a policy where it does not leave a 
place worse than how it met it, right? So in terms of its environment and in terms of social aspect. So if it takes time to ensure that you're going to move something from A to B and everything that is surrounding there is not going to be adversely affected by it, we have to take our time in setting it up. And it's the same thing with knowledge and the same thing with building. If we are building, some, if we are building um, systems that should withstand, if we are building resilience, if we are building enhancement, if we are making things better, as we said that we want to do after the hurricane, then everything that we accomplish and everything that we will have completed would be better. Mm -hmm. So then, and then it takes we'll time. Time that it takes to do that is irrelevant mm -hmm. to the objective itself. The objective is what's supposed to be relevant. So when you ask me if we, if, if it's, if, if we are satisfied with the pace, the pace is what it is to, to, for us to do the things right um, mm -hmm. or to, to, to accomplish the, 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 the responsibilities that we are given in a proper way. I think it's more that we, 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 the country should, people should start to ask, okay, when you finish, like we were talking about the Dutch Quarter Community Center and in St. Peter, when it's finished, what, what do you have? You have a backup generator that you didn't have before. Mm -hmm. That supplies the uh, uninterrupted electricity to the, the facility. You have, you have reinstalled and working brand new air conditioners. You have a powerful, um, uh, 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 not powerfully, but you have a uh, protection on your windows and your doors to withstand. And Dutch Quarter, they were, had a problem in the back where water would be coming in. We had to erect yes. a wall. You know, you, you have an enhanced facility that a community could use. And by the way, that facility is also used during the hurricane. And guess what? Yeah. They have a water supply there now that pe persons could go. Remember, I think after the hurricane, there was one across from the university there by the Carnival Village where they had filters and people mm -hmm. could fill up yes. the bottles. Now you have that in your yeah. community. You have one of those in St. Peter's, you have one of those in Dutch Quarter. To me, nice. I am not looking at how long it took us to get it there. I'm looking at the fact that it's there now. Yes. For the future. I agree. I agree. Every That's Everything, every, as you said, we talk about force, right? Everything that needs to happen, it takes time. If you want to ensure it's being done and being done well, it will definitely take time. And what is the encouragement? I'm pretty sure being in it can be frustrating a, a lot of times because what persons don't see is the nitty gritties from inside, the stress that, that is within. People look for the finished product, but in order to get something really good, it takes time. And we are people, we are, we are a click of a finger people these days. We want things right now, readily available, all right? So it definitely takes time, but the importance as what you stated, and I would reiterate as well, what is there now? You can actually see what time produces, what, is, what was produced over time. We, we are able to see what, the, what is happening at our medical facility, the yeah. medical center. We're able to see what's happening at the fire, uh, the fire station here. We're able to see uh, the community centers in the districts. We're able to see- The station. I mean, the as well. at, I mean, a hurricane hit tomorrow, the police just close their windows, the shutters, they know the roof is intact, that, you know, everything that exactly. are backup generated, they, they're good, right? Because exactly. at the end of a, of a storm, you don't want those guys having to go and, I mean, when you hear the stories that, that, that you, that happened, you know, with, with Hurricane Irma, these mm -hmm. people put their lives, you know, at mm -hmm. risk for us to protect us. And the yes. building that they were in, you know, got, I mean, this this is a concrete roof we're talking about that that where windows blew out and stuff, and and they had to basically you know bunker down in different areas there, mm -hmm. um, and 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 that is that that is not only that doesn't only affect you mentally, or physically, but it also affects you mentally. And then these individuals, we expect them the next day to be on the road conducting traffic, keeping yes. people here and there. I mean, maintaining order. Exactly. So, I mean, we have to make sure that when we do something um, that it's done to the level where they can, they can be protected properly. Yeah. And the same way when you go to homes, I mean, we, we, I, the thing that, 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 um, that I was very much um, happy to, to experience is the, is the appreciation of some of our, of our elder, elder persons who, who homes mm -hmm. 
they were so appreciative of the fact. I mean, we're not rebuilding a house. Yes. Back on a roof properly, you know. And, you know, they still have to go. We put lights and, and the, the basic things, and they still have to, you know, you know, put back furniture and stuff. But there were some, some persons that were so, you know, so St. Martin, so appreciative of the fact that they can now, you know, look forward to the next storm simply because they have an enhanced home that, that they know that would, that would hopefully, because these storms are, 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 are very uh, much, you know, they have a life of their own. And you know, in certain storms, a lot, of, a lot of buildings get damaged because of flying debris, but they have a better chance now of their, their, their property being able to withstand um, some of these heavy storms that we're going to get simply because we've done it, you know, better than what it was before. And that, that, that to me, you know, it, it, it makes me feel worthy of what we are doing, you know, because these are the yes. parts that have put so much into St. Martin and we, we mm -hmm. had the opportunity to help them. That is definitely, it definitely gives a, a sense of satisfaction, a renewed hope. Yep. And I'm pretty sure for persons like yourself and your team who is getting up every day and doing this, there, there will definitely be moments where you're discouraged, but getting the report like that, getting, getting the show, having the show of appreciation, it definitely will boost, will boost you, replenish your spirit and say, hey, this is why we do it. This exactly. is the reason why we're doing it. And then so, that's, yeah. why, that's why as a director, uh, you know, we, we listen, I tell my staff, I want, you, I, want, I want you to own what you do, right? So yes. if you don't agree with my position, defend yours, you know? Yes, because definitely. I'm going to push back hard until you could convince me otherwise. And exactly. And I'm convinced, then I, because I report to the prime minister, right? Yeah. And I don't want to go to the prime minister with, 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 with 60 or 70%. I want to make sure that when we, because the prime minister represents the country, when we speak exactly. or when we give advice or when we give information, it is on the ball, you know, because this, mm -hmm. this, this what we are doing here is to ensure that this country can stand the future, regardless of whatever it brings. And, and we, I say this always, we only have one opportunity to spend 550 million. We can't spend it twice. Yeah. So we have to do it right the first time. Definitely. So we have here, uh, Lawrence asks, okay, one minute. Lawrence, uh, he says, when government asks, asks for you to pay your bills, taxes, et cetera, persons get mad. When things go wrong, same people say government need to do this exactly. and that. Example, exactly. a, road is, a road is built and persons break it up and say governments will build it again. The understanding of governments by the people is bad, definitely. One of the things that stood out as well, we have a we had a program. It ended at the end of September. was was income support and training, so persons who were working in the, in in the hospitality field, mm -hmm. um, in in certain fields that was affected by the hurricane, mm -hmm. were given an opportunity to to get training, and um, they were given a stipend, a thousand dollars a month. They were given health insurance. So from since hurricane to the end of September, and I think government is, is, is has a, there's a little buffer there that government is, is, is uh, continuing the program. Um, but when these individuals had the opportunity to get their certificate after going through the training, and you hear the stories of how, you know, this whole program had transformed them into, into appreciating the fact that they had an opportunity to do this, one of the things that I told them is that you need to take that into your community. You need to go and speak mm -hmm. those in your community now, because again, you know, if, if, if and, and I've heard this said, uh, uh, this is not my phrase, but I'm gonna use it because I think it's very important. Anywhere mm -hmm. that is a good place to live and work is a wonderful place to visit. If you take exactly. care of the people who take care of the people who come to spend money here, th they will feel an ownership mm -hmm an obligation to enhance yeah. themselves. And when they get an opportunity for enhancement like this program, you see it with them. You see the feel proud persons who have been working in hotels and, and, and housekeeping and maintenance and, and, and grounds and stuff like that. They, they, are, they feel this is their shining moment. And that was so sweet because these people was, could not go back to the hotel because it's closed, hurricane yes. and stuff. 
but they had an opportunity for, for a year or two to sit in a program, yeah. get, get some, you know, get some income, but get mm -hmm. training, get their, get enhanced. And then, and part of the training was also English and, and heritage, cultural heritage. And, yes. you know, and, and help them to understand the St. Martin product, how it came about, mm -hmm. because we have a lot of immigrants um, yeah. and it's good for them to, 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 to get this exposure because now they get a different appreciation for what we do as a country and why we do what we do and how we do what we do. And now they can own that for themselves. And that, that was really a, a, a very nice experience to, a, a very nice thing to experience, really it was. I, I am familiar with that program and I, I really think uh, it, was, it was massive. It was timely, massive. There are so many persons I know took advantage of it. I see, I saw Falana Alexander, she posted, I think last week there was a graduation yeah. and how, she, she basically spoke about how much it benefited her and where she's going now with it. Like this is just the beginning for her. And I think what it also did or does is for persons who will say, hey, you know what, let me just go for the money because I'm just gonna go in for the money. You go in there not knowing what you're going to involve in, but when you're there, you're stimulated. You feel charged. You're learning things that you never ever thought you would have ever learned before. You, you know never what, you know, what is, you know what is even more beautiful about this program? The, 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 the courses that were given are courses mm -hmm. like electrical uh, maintenance, uh, plumbing, general mm -hmm. maintenance. In these, some of these persons now can go and assist mm -hmm. in building of the country. So, mm -hmm. you know, you see how, how that resiliency thing is built into the people now to be able yeah. to, you know, I was, I was a, a, a houseman. Now I, now I know how to, to, to cut wood and how to measure and how to angle. Yeah. And then that person now, because until he gets that job as a houseman, or he might never go back to houseman, he might mm -hmm. go now to the maintenance department, now have exactly. a skill, right? And, and that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Persons who, you know, women going into the kitchen and, 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 mm -hmm. and learning, you know, the different skills um, and, and cooking. So these persons, when hotels open up, they can now ask for a job as assistant cook or even exactly. walk their way up to becoming a, a sous chef or a, a chef even, because that mm -hmm. is mostly a skill and mm -hmm. that programs open up those, those, that. So it, 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 that is the resiliency really of what this trust fund is doing and how we're going to benefit from it moving forward. Definitely. Kiyama, we, yes. we, 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 we're way over time, you know that, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. But to, to just to add, my cousin Akiba King, she, uh, she was actually one of the recipients. She, she uh, graduated with a, with a certificate in, electri in electri electrical, something about elect electrical. So she's, she now actually is hired. She does electrical work for persons privately. So very, I, I, that's what I'm saying. I do know it, it's no, very she, impactful. She can, she can apply for, the, for the, the enterprise support, open a business, you know, get get equipment, get material, and build her build her own electrical company. You know, I mean, this this yes, is exactly. these are the opportunities that we need to look into these things, as opposed to you know, I, listen, the Dutch are the Dutch; they will always be Dutch, and and they're who mm -hmm. they are, right? But when we have an opportunity like this as a country to help us help ourselves become better at what we mm -hmm. do. You know, we, we, we can't, we, we, we have to see it for what it is. It is an opportunity and we should be grateful for it. Definitely, definitely. Mr. Connor, when I look at my talking hey, points, I, we hit all the nails on the head. We answer everything, we, we converse, we gasp on we gasp. everything. We gasp on everything. So I must commend you and your team for the work you're doing. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll I'll say, hey, what can we do? You know, now you've experienced what gaffing is and the intent of gaffing. You know, we can see where we move forward from there. But I really and truly am graced. I'm graced with your presence. Thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you for to your team, Sabine and Giselle. Um, so very highly appreciative. Continue to be the person I know you are. As you stated in the beginning, this is not we are not only now meeting, we have known each other for quite some time and we have had lengthy conversations <laughs> before. So thank you so much to our viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining in. For those who engage, Lawrence, I see you. Um, 
Nicole Deweaver, Roxanne Esmina, Patricia Plantaflet, and so many, a, a few others actually. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being here as always. And you can look at the replay later. It's always will be on my page. It will be uploaded on YouTube as well. Go to Gaffing, Gaffing, G-Y-H-A-F-F-I-N. Guyanese will say Gaffing, Gaffing. Go on Gaffing.com, subscribe to our newsletter, stay in contact with us, see what we're up to. Nicole DeWeaver says, very, very insightful, an imperative program. Wonderful, Kioma, Mr. Claret Connor. Hey, look who is here. Henrietta Duran York Elige is here. <laughs> hey, hey, hey Miss. Uh, I call her my my name's sake. My mom's name is Henrietta. So hey, my dear, I haven't seen you in a, such a long time, Mr. Connor. Again, Person thank that, you. A person that I, that 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 I I know all my life, and every time we see each other is, is that we used to them because we can't do that anymore. Is that warm embrace? Um, Henrietta. Blame uh, COVID. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but hi to Henrietta as well. Good to see you. Good to, good to know that you're on. I can't see you. You could see me, but. Yeah. Oh, Henrietta is one of our supporters from day one for gaffing. Very, very much so. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, we are about to sign out. Thank you, guys. Take care. See you all next week. Let me see if we get off from here.